God, you are worthy to receive all the praise.
Jesus Christ. A, a big hand of praise this morning. As we take our seat. My case is different. We are taking our call to worship from the book of Psalms, chapter 126. We're going to be reading responsively. I read one, you read two until we get to the last verse. Psalms, chapter 126, verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Verse 2. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Verses together. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. This service is your service. Yeah. You are welcome. My case is different. Let's listen to the following Faith Tabernacle announcement in this service. Number one, praise the Lord. Operation Run, our ongoing Kingdom Advancement Project. Operation Run, our ongoing Kingdom Advancement Prophetic Agenda enters its fifth week today. We are therefore admonished to engage both individually and in our soul winning partnerships in prayer and soul winning to the point of establishment. No one shall miss God's benchmark for him or her in this operation in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, praise the Lord. Amen. Our week of spiritual emphasis for June 2017 holds this week from Wednesday 7th to Friday 9th June 2017. If we are clapping for Jesus, make it bigger. As our custom is, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast for our desired turnarounds, both as a church and as individuals for the month of June and break with the communion at our various zona fellowship centers. Time is 6 to 8 p.m. Number three, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts in 710 locations caught across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual empowerment that will result in victorious living. Time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, praise the Lord. Special water baptism holds this week, Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday morning for all new converts and those who are yet to be baptized since they believed. In all our provincial facilities, we, are, we have bapti where we have baptistries, baptismal gowns and changing rooms. Remember to come with a changing cloth. Time is mo Monday and Tuesday, 6 to 7.30 p.m. and Saturday, 7 a.m. Number five, praise the Lord. Praise. Special Holy Ghost baptism host this week, Tuesday for all new converts and new members at all our provincial facilities. Time is 6 to 7.30 p.m. There shall be no one-hour operation run prayer. Number six, covenant hour of prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Take advantage of this platform as an avenue for your spiritual enhancement. Time is 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Praise the Lord. In this service, it is testimony time. Please, Mosaku Abayomi, come forward for your testimony. Mosaku Abayomi, let's return to the announcement. Number seven, good news. The new and improved Domi online stores 
has now been launched. You can now purchase books, messages on CD, DVDs, and e-books on this platform. For further details, visit the website displayed on the screen. Number eight, good news. The David Oyedekwot Foundation offers a special scholarship to both Covenant University and Landmark University students, respectively. Make it louder for Jesus. For further information on qualification and application, visit the foundation website displayed on the screen. Note that scholarship application closes on 15th of June, 2017. Number nine, Winners Satellite Fellowship. Our house to house fellowship hosts every Saturday. We are expected to be part of this for our spiritual growth and development. Time is 5 to 6 p.m. Number 10, lastly, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 11th of June, 2017, shall be our special healing service. It shall also double as our special as a monthly special communion service, come expecting definite encounters with God via his word and the communion table. Service schedule is as you are. Jesus is Lord. Testimony time. Please come forward to share testimony before the saints, your name, straight to the point, what the Lord has done for you. My case is different. My name is Mosa Kuabayomi. I serve in the high city group of this church. I've come to give all the praise to God for giving me 40 quantum leaps via obedience to Matthew 6.33. Since the wonder double agenda was declared, I engaged wholeheartedly with my wife, believing that it is ordained for my enthronement. I set aside the first four hours of my day to engage spiritually as led by God, drive new converts to church, paid school fees and work fees for some, and praying them to the point of establishment in service unit. Last year, God led me to sow my hand of discussion car, also gave a special prophet seed and my January salary, and I did all. In the first week of the 21 days fasting, God revealed to me from Daniel 9.20 that the secret to spiritual intelligence is praying for the kingdom, and he led me to apply for an international job to lead the design of a G7 infrastructure. I was invited for an interview in United Kingdom. That same week, God gave me 10 souls, after which I headed for the interview. It lasted for four hours, but God manifested his wisdom through me all through. I was told to, a reply would be sent to me in two weeks, but in three hours, I received the letter of appointment. The wonder about this job is that it comes with a lot of exemption benefits, which validates that my case is different. It comes with diplomatic benefits and immunity for all my member, family members. It comes with tax exemption from all my incomes and in Europe, 40 quantum leaps in my salary, official vehicle to and from work in Europe, PhD in Cambridge, full travel funds to and from my own country, Nigeria, when needed, education scholarship for my children from nursery to any level, and several unbelievable benefits. I've come to return all the glory to the God of my Father for causing the giant in me to come out. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a big hand. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus is Lord. Please listen to this documented testimony. 30 years stagnation broken. 11 years ago, before I joined this church, my family had suffered from stagnation for over 30 years. There was no single graduate in my family. When I joined this church, I keyed into all the prophetic word from God's servant. Today, to the glory of God, I am a graduate. Are you celebrating God with a clap offering? Also, towards the end of the grand finale of the 30th anniversary, the bishop declared, that anyone that was jobless will return to testify of a miracle job. During the week, I got information about a job at Lekki. Today, I'm gratefully employed. Glory be to God. The testify is success BA. For these testimonies, lift your hands to Jesus. Wave him to him. It's worthy of our praise. My case is different. Please listen to this epistle from the Apostle over this commission titled Prophetic Focus for June 2017. My case is different greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Lord for his awesome presence in our midst all through the month of May. 
particularly by unveiling to us the revelation of how faith works, thereby putting us in command of life, situations, and circumstances. We also bless the Lord for the continuous ingathering of souls into our various local assemblies around the world, which continues to validate God's purpose for the ongoing Operation Run prophetic agenda. To God be all the glory. But what is the Holy Ghost saying to us as a church family in this great month of June 2017? Remember, the month of June and July represent the mist of the year, a prophetic season of revival, breakthroughs, and change of levels. According to scriptures, the wind bloweth where it listed, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The scripture, this scripture implies that the supernatural is the natural heritage of every child of God. But we must be reminded that we live in a kingdom that operates on keys. Keys here connote a revelation of what we must do to take delivery of what has been provided for us in redemption. Some keys that we put believers in command of the supernatural include a proven new birth experience, a sustainable commitment to putting the revelation of the word to work, unshakable faith in God and his word, possessing and maintaining an ever-growing love for God, an undying commitment to serving God and the interests of his kingdom as a lifestyle, and many more. All through this month, God shall be putting in our hands vital keys to commanding the supernatural that will remain effectual all through the days of our lives. We should also remember that we are in the enthronement phase of the ongoing kingdom advancement revival, and the same God who enthroned Joseph Daniel and many others in scriptures shall begin to supernaturally enthrone every one of us that is genuinely engaging in this ongoing operation run, which is barely four weeks more to go. Therefore, the prophetic focus for the month of June 2017 is, I am redeemed to operate in the supernatural. Shall we declare together? The anchor text is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 18. Recommended books of the month authored by me include Walking in the Miraculous, Operating in the Supernatural, Releasing the Supernatural, and Commanding the Supernatural. Remain ever blessed. Jesus is Lord. Please put your hands together for the Lord. My case is different. This morning is my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping for the first time on Sunday like this at the Faith Tabernacle. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise on your feet this morning. Rise on your feet this morning. People of God, give Jesus a big, 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 big hand. It's worthy of praise and worthy of all the glory. Please remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a special welcome package. Along with it, they will give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive both the package and the slip, please you may take your seat and begin to fill that card in the course of this welcome. If you have received yours, please take your seat and begin to fill your card in the course of this welcome. I'd like to welcome you this morning on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oedipo. I want you to know you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. And that means every siege against your life and destiny comes to an end today in the name of Jesus Christ. According to the scriptures, the company you keep determines what accompanies you. You have come today to this company of the blessed. The blessings of God shall begin to accompany you from today in the name of Jesus. You have come today to this breakthrough company. Breakthrough shall become your identity from now in the name of Jesus Christ. You have come to this testifying family. Testimony shall become your experience from now in the name of Jesus. But the only way to partake of whatever flows in any company is to get planted there. The Bible says those who are planted in the house of God, they will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, my charge to you today is settle down upon this mountain. Get planted. Get rooted. Engage every word that comes from this altar in teaching, instruction, and in prophetic direction. And as you put the word of God to work, 
the world will begin working wonders in every department of your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And just like Obedidom in the scripture who engaged with God and within three months God changed his story, for you also, as you engage the word of God from this mountain, within the space of three months from this day, your story has already changed for the better in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I'd like again for every one of our first time worshippers to rise on our feet for a word of prayer and blessing. All first time worshippers, again, please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning with gratitude for these ones that your mighty hands have drawn. You brought them here for a blessing. Therefore, we decree each one of them blessed in the name of Jesus. Whatever they left behind as a concern, we decree it converted to a testimony. And in the name of Jesus, any one of them that is yet to be saved, we decree today as the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Please be seated comfortably. Ensure your form is completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you're welcome and God richly bless you. Give Jesus a big hand. My case is different. In this service this morning, it's offering time. Offering time. So shall it be for you. If you haven't done so yet, please properly package your worship seat for this service and label it properly. If you have your tithes here today as well, 10% of God's increases upon your life, package it honorably and any other kind of financial seed that you might have brought to worship God with today, put them together. And as you do so, let's do it with this understanding from the Bible. God's Word tells us in Genesis chapter 8, and verse 22, while the earth remained seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. As long as there is daytime and nighttime, your harvest is guaranteed every time you sow. Therefore, as you sow again this morning, that financial seed in your hand, your harvest is guaranteed. Can I hear louder? Amen. Amen. Would you please rise up on your feet and seek your seed in your hand, lift it up to the Lord, present it to him, lift up your voice to God at the same time and thank him and praise his name as you present your financial seed to him today. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This seed in your hand today is declared blessed. Amen. As you sow this financial seed for every title today, your heavens are declared open. Amen. The devourers are rebuked for your sake. Amen. For every giver sowing one kind of financial seed today or another, as you sow it today, it shall come back to you a miracle for yeah. Such that while others are begging, your case shall be different and you shall be given. Yeah. This hand shall never lack. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah. Shall they believe in Amen. Yeah. You may please be seated comfortably, cast your seat with excitement as you welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir for the administration.
and begin to give this able God the glory. Celebrate him and honor him for the privilege you have to be in his presence this morning. 
lift your voice and give him praise. Celebrate him. Glorify his holy name. Thank him for the privilege that you have to be in his presence this morning. Glorify the holy name of the Lord. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Father, we have come to give you praise. We have come to give you glory. We have come to give you honor. We have come to celebrate you. And now this morning begin to ask him to speak to you clearly by his word today. Lord, speak to me this morning by your word. Establish my change of story by your word. Establish my liberty by your word. I'm here for an encounter with your word this morning. Appear to me today by your word. Father, thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning for the privilege we have to be your presence. Thank you because you are here and you are set to visit each one. Lord, speak directly to us today by your word. Let everyone depart here with a change of story. You have called today breaking generational causes. Let every issue of long continuance be brought to an end. We give you the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. If somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in his presence. My case is different. Because I'm redeemed of the Lord. As a covenant child, what affects others is not permitted to affect me. Congratulations. This morning, as we commence in our journey, what God has in store for us in this great month of June, we'll be looking at God's word in this teaching series that is captioned, Vital Keys to Unlocking the Supernatural. Vital keys to unlocking the supernatural. Remember that the prophetic focus for the month, as we heard earlier, is I am redeemed to operate in the supernatural. Vital keys to unlocking the supernatural. We must be reminded, according to scriptures, that we live in a kingdom that operates by keys. Matthew chapter 16 verse 19 Behold I give unto you the keys of the kingdom Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven And whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven The kingdom of God operates by keys Keys here connote a revelation Of what must be done to take delivery Of what redemption has provided in the first service, God's servant, our Father said it this way, that information is knowing what God has provided. Revelation is knowing how to access it. It is good to know what God has provided, but it is better to know how to get it. And this is what we refer to as the keys of the kingdom. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52, the Bible says, Woe to you lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. So, revelation, knowledge, is what we refer to as the keys of the kingdom. In Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, the Bible says, It said, My people are gone into captivity because they lack knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and the multitude is dried up with test." The problem is an absence of revelation. So it takes us walking in the light of God's word in order to command the supernatural. And there are some vital keys that we must come to realize if you and I are going to operate in the supernatural. And that's our focus in this great month. For example, we know that anyone that will operate in the supernatural must have a valid and proven new birth experience. Until a man is born again, that individual is natural. 
The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 8, it said there, what John chapter 3 verse 8, it said, the wind blows wherever it leaves. It said, you hear the sound of it, you cannot tell where it's going to or where it's coming from. It said, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So everyone that is born again is born to live a supernatural life. And that shall become your experience from this month in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say a loud amen. I said somebody believe it, say a loud amen. That shall become your experience from this month in the name of Jesus. So we shall be uncovering from God's word the vital keys to unlocking the supernatural. And number one is a commitment to spiritual growth and development. A commitment to spiritual growth and development. The Bible makes clear in the book of Galatians chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. It said an heir as long as he is a child, he differed nothing from a servant though he is lord of all. He is put under tutors and governors until the time that is appointed on the father. He is an heir. He owns everything. Everything is in his name but yet he is not different from his servant. In other words, without growth, if you don't grow, you will groan. It takes growth to escape groaning. It is spiritual growth that allows you to manifest supernatural authority. Somebody understand that? Say loud, amen. This is important. We must therefore commit ourselves to, sup to spiritual growth and development if we are going to command the supernatural. All through the scriptures you discover that it is sons that manifest, not children. In Romans chapter, chapter 8 and verse 19, it said the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation, not of the children of God, but of the sons of God. Until we grow into sonship, our manifestation will be restricted. It takes our sonship, our development, our growth in order to demonstrate our divinity. This is very important. So we must understand the necessity for spiritual growth and development. Like I said earlier, if we don't grow, we will groan. It takes growing to escape groaning. Everyone that will manifest the supernatural demands of necessity spiritual growth and development. And it's important for us to recognize that spiritual growth and development is not automatic. It is the product of certain conscious steps that we must take. The question is how do I grow spiritually? How do I develop myself spiritually? There are two vital keys that will help you and I to develop spiritually. The first of them is the word of God. The Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, it said, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. The word of God is our builder. Peter speaking said that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of, a of the word that ye may grow thereby. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. So our growth is determined by our appetite for the word. That is why you see in the natural, when a mother sees a child that does not have appetite, she's very concerned because the growth of that child is dependent on the appetite. The more the child is able to eat, the more the child is able to grow. In the same vein, the more you are able to eat the spiritual food of the world, the more you are able to grow. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. The more of his word you take, the more like God you look. So the supernatural is at the mercy of our appetite for the word of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18, it said, We all with open face, we behold him as in a glass, and we are changed into the same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. I don't know if you have observed when a baby is born, 
there's always a lot of discussion about who the child looks like. Is he looking like the father? Is he looking like the mother? But it is only a matter of time. As growth comes, the baby's face begins to take shape. Suddenly you begin to see the face of the father inside the child. Because as the child is growing, the more it begins to look like the father. As you take in God's word, the more you will look like him. He said, we all with open face, as we are beholding him, as we are eating the food of the world, he said, we shall begin to look like the image of God. When the devil sees you, he begins to see God in you. He begins to see the power of God around you. He begins to see the, uh, the almighty back in you. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. So our growth in the world makes us to look more like God. Number two thing we do if we are going to grow spiritually is we must engage the force of prayer. It takes prayer to grow. The Bible tells us in the book of Jude verse 20, it said, building up yourselves upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Our fervency in prayer gives urgency to our growth. Our fervency in prayer gives urgency to our growth. The more committed we are to pray, the more deliberate we are about growing. That is why watch it when you see a believer who just got born again, but is committed to the word of God and committed to prayer, they will grow quickly. And in the realm of the spirit, growth is not about age. It is about commitment to spiritual practice. It is never about age. The more committed you are to the things that grow you, the more you grow spiritually. In the realm of the spirit, it is possible for you to be born again for 30 years and still be a baby. And it's possible for you to be born again for six months and be a son. It is all a product of your conscious engagement. So how fast you grow is determined by how much you engage. You engage the word of God, you engage the art of prayer, the more you begin to experience spiritual growth. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. And number three thing we do to build ourselves spiritually and to grow is to exercise ourselves. 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 7 and verse 8. The Bible tells us there, it said that bodily exercise profits little. It said, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is and that which is to come. Spiritual exercise, engaging ourselves in spiritual exercise. What an opportunity we have this week again, not only to pray, not only to pursue after souls, but what an opportunity we have to wait upon the Lord in the week of emphasis. Because our spiritual exercise is an opportunity for growth. I see God engracing each one of us to exercise ourselves abundantly in the name of Jesus. So commitment to spiritual growth and development is the first and most important key for us to unlock the supernatural. Number two key is commitment to engaging biblical mentality. Commitment to engaging biblical mentality. In Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, the Bible says to us there, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Put it this way, that your mentality determines your reality. How you think is what determines how you live. Everything that Christ has done for us in redemption is available within each one of us, but you and I have a responsibility to think properly in line with scriptures. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, the Bible says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Without a new mindset, you can't have a new lifestyle. It takes a new mindset to experience a new lifestyle. For example, the Bible makes us to understand in John chapter 3 and verse 6, it says, Whatsoever is born of the flesh is flesh. And whatsoever is born of the Spirit is spirit. I remember many years ago, the, for the first time I was hearing God's servant talk about this scripture. And it caught my, it caught my attention. He said, whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. 
and whatever is born of the spirit is spirit not spiritual there are many spiritual people that are not spirit conscious they are they are conscious of their activity but not their reality please hear this and hear it very well you are not just spiritual you are a spirit you see a man can swim but he's not a fish swimming is done by fish and fish can swim even though a man may be able to swim it does not make him a fish are you hearing what I'm saying I'd like you to understand this morning that even though you look like an ordinary man you are not ordinary your content is different you are you look like them but you are not like them you carry a physical body like them but you are not like them inside of you is a God being you are not just not just ordinary mankind no put it this way you are the God kind of mankind wherever they see you they are seeing the God model of men walking upon the earth that shall become your experience in the name of Jesus now in John chapter 4 verse 24 the Bible says John 4 24 the Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must do so in spirit and in truth if indeed God is a spirit and we are born of God then anyone that is born of God is born a spirit you are carrying human flesh but your content is a living spirit your content is a living spirit that means that what died in Adam at the beginning was quickened in you at salvation the thing that gave Adam dominion at the beginning was quickened in you at salvation that's what made Adam to be walking in the midst of the garden lion on the left tiger on the, on the, on the right wolf in the front hyena at the back and not one could bite because he was carrying a living spirit he was operating in authority. That's what made Adam go, go to the rivers and begin to name the shark, name the whale, name all the beasts of the sea, the octopuses, and all the hippopotamuses and everything that was located in the waters and not one could bite because he was carrying in him a living spirit. How can you carry a living spirit and be tormented by evil spirits? How can you be carrying a living spirit and be oppressed by demonic spirits? You are not just a spiritual man, you are a living spirit. Now hear this, I heard God servant our father say in the second service, he said, now, evil possessed people are called demonized. They are not demons. They are demonized people and yet we see them demonstrate authority. You are not now a spiritualized person, you are a spirit. You are operating as a spirit in physical body. They are demonized. You are not just spiritualized, you are actually a spirit. A living, speaking spirit just like God. To suffer oppression is an abomination. From today, that living spirit in you will begin to take dominion. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, shout, begin to say loud, amen. So we must possess the mentality of the supernatural. It must become our mental state at all times. Now, I'd like us to think about the consequence of that statement. I am not just spiritual, I am a spirit. The question is this. Is there a hospital for treating spirits? Then it means sickness is not to be your experience. Is there a place where they can begin to diagnose spirits? No. Then it means that to be oppressed, tormented, buffeted is not your portion. By redemption, you are ordained a spirit. Have you ever seen somewhere where an accident just happened and people gather around and there's nothing on the floor but they say a spirit is lying down on the floor because he just had an accident? No way. Spirits don't have accidents. You are not permitted to be accidented. You can't hear of when they say armed robbers came and they shot a spirit. 
it means that if you are a spirit, you are unharmable, unhurtable, untouchable, you are insurmountable, you are indestructible. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. You are a spirit. You must possess that mentality. The supernatural is your natural estate. You are to operate like Christ. The Bible says in John 14 and verse 12, it said, they that believe upon me, the works that I do, shall ye do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to my Father. When you saw Jesus walking physically on the earth, there was nothing that made him tied to the human experience. Pilate looked at him and said, do you not know I have power to let you go? He said, no man can take my life from me. I have power to lay down. I have power to take it up again. He said, do you not know I can presently pray and my father will give unto me 12 legion of angels. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. It is of another world or else my, my servants will fight on my behalf. Jesus was very conscious of the fact that he was not natural. The truth is this, so are you. You are not natural. If you are born again, you are not natural. If you are born again, you are not natural. You are born again to live a supernatural life. And that shall become your experience in the name of Jesus. I said that shall become your experience in the name of Jesus. That shall become your experience in the name of Jesus. That shall become your experience in the name of Jesus. So it means the supernatural signs, wonders, all of that should become our natural estate. No wonder the Bible says in Isaiah 8 and verse 18, he said, I and the children with the Lord has given me therefore signs and for wonders in Israel. Everyone that is a child of God is ordained by God as a sign and a wonder. You are ordained to live a supernatural life. That is, they cannot explain you, but they can't deny it. They see you, they see what is happening, there is no natural explanation. You enter into the company, you came in at the base and now they just catapulted you to the CEO. Nobody can explain it. They can't understand it, but they cannot deny it. The reason they can't deny it is that you are there writing their letters. You are there signing their checks. You are there taking authority in the place. They can't deny it. Simply by operating in the supernatural. From this moment forward, you shall never be limited to the natural again. I say you shall never be limited to the natural again. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. amen. What is God telling us? He's saying to you and to me, we must change our thinking to change our living. We must change our thinking to change our living. It is real, but for you to experience it, it must saturate your thoughts. In the book of Philippians chapter 4 and in verse 8, the Bible lists a number of things. And if you look at the quality of the things that are written here, only the word of God satisfies every one of those qualities. And it said, think on these things. That is, take God's word and begin to think on it. What comes out of your life is determined by what goes into your heart. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 it said there, it said guard your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. You and I have a responsibility after salvation to reprogram our mind. It is our duty to take responsibility and begin to reprogram our mind. You see, if you have used certain phones, you discover that you get a phone, they can reset a phone for you to factory setting. And that means everything on the phone is wiped off. But you want to put that phone and customize it to yourself. You must now begin to reprogram it personally. If I give you a phone, for example, the phone's name may be called Pastor David's phone. But we reset it now. And suddenly you can set it with your own name. You can put your own details there. You can put everything you desire there. That is the reprogramming process. When you became born again, what happened is that you were taken back to factory setting. And now God says it will take your renewing of the mind to reprogram you to begin to operate as God designed you to operate. From this moment forward, you shall operate as God designed you to operate. Number three key 
to unlocking the supernatural is commitment to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Commitment to serving God and the interest of his kingdom. Every time you find a man, a woman committed to serving God, they end up as a living wonder to their world. Daniel chapter 3 verse 24 to 28, we find these three Hebrew boys and suddenly they went before the king and said, no, we are not going to bow before this image. Our commitment is to serve God and serve God alone. And they cast the three of them bound into the fiery furnace. Those who pushed them in died on the way. But the ones they pushed in were moving around in the fire. And suddenly Nebuchadnezzar said, I see four men. Were there not three there? They're bound. I see them loose walking around in the fire. And he shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out of the fire. And they came out of the fire. The Bible said, not only could the fire not burn them, the fire could not touch their clothes and even the smell of fire was not upon their body and they beheld this man upon whom the fire had no power the fire had no power what was their qualification servants of the most high god we just heard the testimony of one of us who began to engage serving god on the altar of prayer in the pursuit of souls. He said, paying for Vayek, paying for examinations, paying for all kinds of things for his new converts. And when God pushed him forward, he pushed him 40 quantum leaps at once. 40 quantum leaps. You see, when you have a little child that is pushed by another child, the child that pushed, the child that is pushed may move forward a few steps. But when you have a wrestler take a child and push him forward, you discover that that child catapults levels. When men are pushing you, your progress will be gradual. When God is pushing you, it will be sporadic. And everyone that commits to serving God has God pushing them forward. God just took that man and pushed him and he landed at 40 quantum leap from where he started. As you are serving God in this operation run season, where God has brought us to our enthronement level, as God pushes you, you will land where no eye or no ear has heard before. Somebody believe it, say louder, amen. Your commitment to serving God provokes your existence in the realm of the supernatural. When we obey and serve God in truth, we commit him to manifest himself unto us. John 14 and verse 21, he said, He that hath my commandment and keepeth them, it is him that loveth me, and he shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. Everyone that is committed to serving God, doing the things that God commands, he said, God is said to manifest himself. I see God manifesting himself in your direction. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beyond that, serving God supernaturally protects, secures, and defends us against all attacks of the wicked one. It supernaturally protects, secures, and defends us against all attacks of the wicked one. Job chapter 1 verse 8 and verse 9. He said concerning Job, have you not blessed him? You have blessed the works of his hand. You have put an edge around him and around all that is hand. You have caused his goods to increase in the land and you have blessed him on every side. So the blessing is there, but the protection is there. The defense is there. The security is there. You must come to understand that only the backing of God can secure a destiny. Only the backing of God can secure a destiny. Only the backing of God can secure a destiny. There is no human security apparatus that can secure a destiny. Not one. But when God is your defense, by reason of your commitment to serving him, then there is nothing that is permitted to touch you. Nothing shall be permitted to touch you. In the book of Luke chapter 10, 
verse 17 down to verse 19. Having returned from where they were sent, the, Bi the Bible says the 70 returned again with joy from their assignment. And they said, even the devils were subject unto us. And the Bible tells us in verse 18, and he said, I beheld Satan as you went on this assignment, falling like lightning from heaven. And behold, now I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means that is there is no how it can try to make it nothing shall by any means hurt you no arrow can reach you no weapon can formed against you can prosper it frustrates the devices of the crafty it does not allow them to perform their own enterprise shout hallelujah all of this as a result of serving God I like us to recognize therefore your stewardship to God is absolutely to your benefit it ushers you into the realm of the supernatural it protects secures and defends you against the assault of the wicked I see each one of us enjoying the full-scale defense of the Almighty in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ somebody believe me say a loud amen, amen. It's important for us to recognize today is our breaking generational causes service. And it's important for us to recognize that generational causes can be broken. And the good news is that for you, it will be broken today. <laughs> Most causes are often generational. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 and 5, the Bible talks about the Lord visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Most causes are generational. Before Christ came, since the fall, man was living on thy cause. But after Christ came, Galatians 3, 13 and 14 says, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us, for it is written, Cost is every man that hangs upon the tree that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles and that we may receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. So through Christ's death and resurrection, there was a cancellation of every authority of the enemy to impose a curse upon you. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and verse 15, the Bible tells us there that he was blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that were written against us, which was contrary to us. He took it out of the way, nailing them to his cross. And in verse 15, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. What that simply means is that Jesus came for the cancellation of the cause on humanity. When any man therefore accepts Christ, he has come out of a cost lineage. It means any cause still manifesting on any life is illegal as long as he's born again. Anyone that is in Christ has the legal right to be free. Anyone that is in Christ has the legal right to be free. The question is then, why is it that there are manifestations of causes everywhere? The Bible says in Matthew 13 and verse 28, he said, did you not sow good seed in your ground? How come there are tears? He said, an enemy has done it. And I'd like you to know that he did it illegally. But today the thief is caught and that means your liberty must be established. I said, today that thief is caught and that means that your liberty must be established. I said, today that thief is caught and that means your liberty must be established. What are we saying? You have a right to be free. And what is a cause? Anything of long continuance. Evil is not permitted to be celebrating anniversary in your life. Anniversary of sickness, anniversary of oppression, anniversary of stagnation. Anything that is of long continuance is a cause. And today, everything that has taken residence illegally in any department of your life, 
Today, by the authority of Jesus Christ, you are coming out totally free. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. amen. Therefore, expect every cause, generational or diabolical, to be broken in your life today. Amen. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. amen. Or for that to take place, as you will have the opportunity later in this service, you must open your mouth wide and declare war. What you don't speak against will remain. He said, if you say to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and you doubt not in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. So if you don't speak against it, it will stay. But when you speak against it, you will have what you say. I don't know what has been hanging around any department of your life, but today you have the right to speak against it and say, no, your expiry date has finally come. You can't be celebrating anniversary of evil in my life. No, from this day, the siege must be broken. Somebody believe and say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe and say louder, amen. In Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17, he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you are the one responsible to condemn it. So it is you that will open your mouth and trigger fire against everything that is standing against your liberty. There is no mountain anywhere that has the permission to stay where your mouth speaks in faith. Today, as you speak in faith, your liberty shall be completely established. I say your liberty shall be completely established. So, you can win the war by declaring war against the adversary. But it's important for us to understand that when the curse is broken, it must be replaced by the blessing. And stewardship is the way to activate the blessing of God that will avert the causes of life. When a man obeys and serves God, the blessing of God becomes his portion. Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26, he said, you shall serve the Lord your God and he shall bless. The blessing comes as the service is offered. It means that as you commit yourself to serving God, the blessing of God rests upon your life. And the interesting thing about the blessing is this. When God blesses anyone that tries to cause his cost. Genesis chapter 12, beginning from verse 1 to 3. He said to Abraham, I will bless you. You will be a blessing. He said, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. And anyone that blesses you will be blessed. And anyone that causes you will be cursed. The power of the blessing is this. Even when the cause takes place where you are not aware, God goes to answer on your behalf. Therefore, commit yourself to serving God and you commit God to blessing you. And that blessing remains an eternal aversion for every cause. Those who God causes remain cursed, but those who God blesses remain blessed. No one can bless, no one can curse whom God has blessed. And today, I see you walking into the company of those who remain under the blessing. Somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say it loud, amen. The good news is this. Today is your day. Lift your hand to heaven and give God thanks for his word. I appreciate him for his word that you have received this morning. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. Before we go any further in this service, remember the first and most important step, like we heard in the prophetic theme that was read to us and also in the teaching, the first step to walking in the supernatural is being born again. A genuine experience of salvation. Not just church going, not just engaging in activities, but having genuine connectivity with your maker. Wherever you are this morning, if you are not yet born again, you don't yet have a personal relationship with Jesus, you cannot say for sure that you are truly connected with God. Yes, you may have been going to church, you have been serving, doing different things, but you are not truly connected. Today is your opportunity. 
I'd like you this morning to quickly rise your feet. You say, Pastor, I want to be born again. I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I want to have a real experience with God. I don't just want to be a church goer. I don't just want to be a church attendee. I want to be a genuine child of God. One that has a personal relationship with God. Quickly rise your feet right now. All over this place. All over this place. Also, there are those who are here this morning who for one reason or the other, something went wrong in your walk with God. You found yourself disconnected. You lost touch. You just found that somehow your walk with God has been compromised. Your connectivity is lost. Your heart is gone cold. And you want to return so that you can be restored. Also quickly rise on your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? You want to return to him? You want to have a new, big, new beginning with him? Quickly rise on your feet all over this place. God bless you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody, as they rise. If you have done that in the first and the second call, please make your way to the aisle that is closest to you, and I'll pray with you from there. Make your way to the aisle closest to you. Officials, please help them. Beck on to them, direct them to where to stand. Make your way to the aisle closest to you, and I'll be praying for you from right there. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you have not done so and you need to, quickly do it. It's not too late. Quickly do it. What a day to make a choice for Jesus. What a day to make a choice for Jesus. Quickly take a step and then we begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. For all of those who are set to make that decision, please suspend filling your form right now and lift up your right hand to God. Lift up your right hand. From the depth of your heart, I want you to pray this prayer unto the Lord. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Louder, Lord Jesus. I come to you today as a sinner. I know you died for me. And on the third day, you rose again just to save me. Jesus, wash me with your blood. Jesus, make me a new man. From today, I will serve you. No turning back. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now I pray for you to keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these precious ones that you have brought today into your family. Thank you because you have drawn them by your mighty hand. And Lord, we ask right now that you grant each one of them grace to walk with you all the days of their life. No turning back in the name of Jesus Christ. And grace them to walk in the reality of the supernatural in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a new day. Please make sure your form is completed and you submit it to the official closest to you and then you return to your seat. Give Jesus a big hand everybody as we receive our Father to take us further in this service. Make that hand bigger rise on your feet and give Jesus that hand of praise. You can make it bigger for the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm walking free today. Say it confidently. Because Jesus has paid the price for my rescue. Generational causes have no more hold on my life. Because Christ has redeemed me from the causes of life. It became a cause for me. So I can become a partaker of the blessings that he brought. Now I have the blessings of the gospel on my life. I cannot be carrying causes at the same time. I have the light of the gospel at work in me. I cannot suffer the darkness of causes again. Thank you, Jesus, for the light. I am free at last. I am free forever. Now, whatever you perceive as overstayed, as a concern, as an affliction, now begin to cause them from the root. Anything mocking your walk with God, 
anything mocking your stand for God, begin to curse them now. Begin to curse them now. Everything mocking your destiny is entitled to a cause. of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Goliath cursed David by his God, and David opened fire and gave it to him hot. The Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog? You come to me with staves and sling in your hand. And cursed David by his God. And David said to the Philistine, or cursed David, or cursed the Philistine back, saying, Thou comest to me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Now, hear what he said. This day, how many want to see the cost on their life about it? This day shall the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will bring you down and take thy hand from thee, and I will give thy, the carcass of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air. He said, this day matter. Even today do I declare I will render double unto thee. Now, against any issue of long continuance, open fire. Go ahead. Open fire. Of the Lord. Every marital spell, every business and career spell, every spell of family unrest, every spell of sickness and disease. Every spell of the wicked world hanging around every area of your life is declared broken today. The forces return back to sender Thank you, Father. Precious name we are praying. Would you like to pick this up? God causes. And him that causes you, I will come. Jesus caused the fig tree. The fig tree which you cause is without a way. He said, that is one of what faith offers. Cause anything that mocks you, heaven will stamp it. 
the Holy Ghost caused Elimas with blindness. And saw being filled with the Holy Ghost. So who, who caused Elimas? The Holy Ghost. Walking through Paul. And prophets cause. We saw Elisha cause those 42 children mocking him in the name of the Lord. And God stamped it. For two of them were slain. So causing anything that mocks you and your destiny in Christ is your right. Every weapon fashioned against you is your duty, like we are told in that teaching, to condemn. Now, I'd like you to cause every cause hanging on your life from the roots and return it back to where they came from. Go ahead and pray. against your adversary. Every generational cause is crushed in your life today. Every marital spell is broken off your life today. spell of miscarriage and barrenness is declared over today. Every business and career spell is over today. Every spell of sickness and disease is over in your life today. And whatever forces won't let you go, they go down for you today. Whatever forces I vow not to let you go, I cause them from the roots today. For by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt, and by a prophet was he preserved. I invoke the prophetic unction upon my life for your rescue today. Now in the name of Jesus, that career span is turned to a testimony this week. Marital spell is turned to a testimony this week. The spell of family unrest is over in your life today. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Say with me, the battle is over. I have won the victory. 
have escaped at last. I am free at last. And I am free forever. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Thank you, Father. Amen. Now, listen to this. Don't ever get tired obeying God. In obeying God lies the security of your present, your future, your posterity, and your eternity. Get excited at obeying God. Remain excited doing his biddings. He will stand by you as the lion of the tribe of Judah. No fiery furnace will be able to consume you. No den of lion can terminate your life. Everyone serving God enjoys the realm of the supernatural naturally. Stay there. That my son was spending four hours. I mean, I mean, let me also say to you, it's my relation. But that didn't do anything to it. I didn't know anywhere he applied. I didn't know anything. He was engaging four hours a day. It's in the academic. Four hours a day. Four hours a day. Four hours a day. He was carrying his converse to church. He didn't look like anybody they would give it to. But he got it. Because God gave it to him. Yes, and that's the same. I mean, children's education to any level. Yes. Scholarship. What kind of job is that? What kind of job is that? A most scary to swan a sir. Your promotion is not in my hand. If it were, I will give you. Because I want to up. In your breakthrough is my breakthrough. In your success is my success. Your breakthrough is in the hand of God. Until you do what he says. This my son. Noiseless. No cry. He's moving his family to UK. I mean, God just job without needing to apply for no visa. No, no. He's still doing his PhD. I mean, I can say that he's not done with it. Now you will finish it there. You get paid. You have diplomatic status. Diplomatic. For serving God. Sir, I don't have no hand in it. I only had it when that's happened. You don't need no connection. You need dedication. You, every connection is nonsense. You don't need no... Well, we just came back from three cities. Wari, Asaba, and Enugu. I mean, it's like God came down from heaven. You don't need no... I don't know nobody there. I didn't call nobody. But I was in my hotel and then uh, the head of the, uh, the, the, the state governor just came in and said he needed to see me. It is life. You have been hunting after connection like other Nigerians. You will be frustrated for life. I've seen people connected to the president have nothing going for them. Nothing going for them. But you can't be dedicated to Jesus. I don't have testimony. <laughs> He has left all the others. It's not your involvement that counts, yes, but the degree of the tempo of your engagement. That's what counts. That's what counts. I, I walk this week like Jack. I mean, I, I partner with Jesus this week, walking almost 24 hours. But I still jump on the street. 97 of the souls we got yesterday attended first and second service. 97 of them. <laughs> Ever since this thing started, there is no nation I've entered into without immunity. All kinds, sir. All kinds. All kinds. Something is turning for you now. I have never engaged any connection till date. In 36 years of ministry, my dedication to Jesus has been answering for me raw. 
for these 36 years. So I got friends, but no friend has ever had a request from me in this world. No. I have better access to the great God that can deal with anything at any time. Now listen to me. That testimony has solved my problem. I'm not your problem, and I'm not putting burden on you. I'm only telling you what to do yes. to fulfill God's glorious agenda yes. for your life. Do it. I will do it. Between now and 25th, just be that raw child of God. Yes. That is after the matters of his kingdom. Yes. He will take over your matters. Amen. Amen. I've never had a job that covers scholarship in my life. <laughs> a scholarship for your children to any level. any level. What kind of job is that? <laughs> no. Say God kind of job. <laughs> Say with me, God kind of job. Now, there are going to be many God kind of businesses, imagine. Amen. God kind of inventions, imagine. Yeah. God kind of enthronement, imagine. Yeah. And is starting this man. Yeah. Your own is landing this man. Yeah. Did you enjoy the teaching of the world this morning? Yeah. Lift up your two hands to heaven and give God thanks as we close right now. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name, shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Sure. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Peace. My case is different because I'm the demon of the Lord and as a covenant child. You know what I see? I see crowns on your head. You won't miss your crown to carelessness. Yeah. I see crowns on your head. Yeah. Never miss that. Amen. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Let's move out with speed.